Welcome to the mic, Monica. How are you going? Very good, Hello. thank you. Thanks for taking some time out to check in with us. How, um, how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. I'm in, uh, I'm in Nambaka Heads um, on Gumbangi country. So I just want to shout out to um, my son's family and um, pay my deep respects to the Gumbangi peoples um, and elders, both past and present. So, yeah, it's beautiful to be up here and visiting. Nice yeah. one, nice one. Let's uh, let's head straight back to 2015. Your time as uh, <coughs> Miss Nadoc. Can you still recollect some memories and and can you feel the that wild ride of a tsunami yeah. of emotions? Tell us a little bit about yeah. those moments. It was really yeah taking me back. Just looking at some of the prompt questions and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I was. Uh, nominated by my now sister-in-law um i was doing my traineeship at a ubijuri theater company and yeah it was wild um it was such an honor and a privilege to be nominated and um to actually receive that title and and it was quite an extensive process so we were nominated and then we went through a couple of days of media training as well um so we had to get through the nominations and then um yeah do media training and have um you know, essentially prepare ourselves for, for what it was like, what, what it would be like to um, hold that title and to be interviewed and um, to essentially be a professional public speaker mm. um, because that was what we did. Um, so, yeah, it was quite extensive leading up and for the awards night, it was at the Spiegel tent in Collingwood oh, cool. and um, we actually had to pre- pre- present ourselves and do like a five-minute speech of who we are and... Um, what we stand for and our hopes and dreams um, for our futures. So it was pretty, it was pretty intimidating. And then we had a a panel of judges and they decided on the night who would be Mr. or Mrs. Nadok, Miss Nadok. So can you remember, can you remember those things, what what you said back then, what you stand for? Um, Can you remember what you said? Oh, I can't remember exactly, but I, if I think back, it would have, I was, um, I spoke about actually just my journey of um, being a performing artist and um, being a singer songwriter and, and those kind of aspirations that I had as a 21 year old um, and how um, I believe I am continuing my culture through, through storytelling and through, you know, performing arts and, and um, also continuing on the legacy of my family as well. And my, uh, my grandmother and um, my forefathers and mothers, you know, um, you know, my family have been fighting for a very long time and my grandmother's house is actually an Aboriginal embassy. So um, I, yeah, I just spoke from the heart and, um, and yeah, I just really shared, you know, who I was and what I was doing at, at that time. And, mm. and yeah, and just really, um, really just put my heart on the table. <laughs> How did the, um, did the media training help for you? Um, yeah, that no, was good preparation. I'm not sure if all, everyone in, in the past or even, mm. um, you know, recent Mr. Miss Nadox um, got that kind of extensive training, but it was good. And even if you didn't um, receive the title, it was such a good experience for mm. young people just to like, just to have, um, you know, professionals guiding you through how to um, do public speaking and um, how to just, you know, stand strong and be confident in, in yourself and, and um, yeah, in, in what you say and... Mm. Yeah, it was. It was definitely. Yeah, it was. It was a good experience for sure. What's the what's what was the shift for you? Um, you just mentioned you're 21. Um, you know, so much life ahead of you, in thoughts, and you you've you've grown a lot since that moment. But back then, what was what did the award mean to you? Um, it was definitely. It was like a next phase. It was like a huge step, you know what I mean? Um, it was a massive responsibility. So getting that, it was like there was no turning back from that moment. It's <laughs> yeah. like it was like, oh, yeah, you know, just be Miss Nadoc. It's like, no, this is a huge responsibility. And there was, you know, I really had to kind of step into the deep end and um, face a lot of fear as well. Um, because it was a huge title and we, and you wear it for 12 months and you represent your community, you represent your family. So, um, it was kind of like, all right, you want to be a performing artist. Do you want to be in the spotlight? Now you're also carrying, you know, you're carrying your identity, um, in the public eye, you know, and, and you're representing what you, you're representing your community and your family and what you believe in and, 
and now you've got to step up because you're you're acknowledged for being a young leader so you have to fill those fill those shoes essentially mm. and i will just say i was um i shared the title with uh eddie bryant who's a gun eye man cool. yeah so it was awesome sharing sharing that week with him as well so i just wanted to yeah do a shout out to <laughs> oh, eddie yeah. as well <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. what was the week like for you like um getting out getting to all the events um it's yeah. it's not very replicated i don't think many people get much training to just rush oh. around five mm -hmm. events plus anything else that slings you away you're pretty yeah. recognizable for a week how did you handle it it was intense <laughs> like nobody gave us you know like yes we had two days of training but nothing could have prepared us for <laughs> yeah. just the absolute demand of our time and um and just yeah, like we, we went to multiple events every day leading up to the ball all week. Yeah. Um, you know, from, you know, we're visiting the Elizabeth Morgan House to ACES Aboriginal um, Centre for Elders and to the Aboriginal Advancement League, to Victoria Police, um, to the Government House, the reception, um, the Government reception, and doing a speech in front of hundreds of people, including like delegates and politicians and and community members as well, so and elders as well. So um, it was exhausting and invigorating and a huge, huge lesson. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was it was a pretty it was a pretty awesome experience, but um, it wasn't it wasn't an easy ride as well. Like it wasn't. Mm. Um, like it was challenging, definitely, you know, challenging for, for young people, mm. um, you know, being 2021, 20, yeah, yeah. it's a pretty big, pretty big responsibility. Um, because you almost treated, treated like royalty. <laughs> you literally yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're trying <laughs> and, to, and, we're know, trying to eliminate the <laughs> crowning part, the wording, but it's, it's, it starts off with that. You're being crowned or, you know, you got, did yeah, you, ever, you did literally you are being crowned and, um, but also you kind of, um, you're looked upon and um, by government officials yeah. and people are actually like for that week are like, oh, you know, you're Miss Nadoc and you're Mr. Nadoc and and um, you you have to kind of you have to be on the ball and mm. and really um, you give a lot of energy and and you give you give your best. You know, we gave our best and mm. we had a great time doing it as as much as it was. It was like a whirlwind. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was massive. What massive. um yeah. Uh Always was, always will be is, is this year's NADOC mm. theme, something you've heard before many times. What, yeah. what, is it, what do you think about when you hear those words? And well, I just want to say that the theme that I was Miss NADOC was um, we stand on sacred ground. Mm. And um, it's just interesting and ironic because, you know, everything that's happening at the moment, you know, that was five years ago. And we think about how, you know, certain decisions within Australia – um, you know what what's what's happened with um, our sacred sites and things like that and you know coming to now being always was always will be Aboriginal land um, you know it's about that you know our cultures we're not going anywhere you know our cultures are still evolving they're still present they're still living mm. and we are on sacred con country and we need to as a nation actually start um, collectively acknowledging that because you know NADOC week isn't just for our community it's it's nationwide it, it is for the wider community and if five years ago the theme was um, we stand on sacred ground you know that that was an opportunity for Australia to th say hey hang on let's let's listen let's try to understand and therefore we can build a, a deep deep respect mm. and I think we still have a long way to go um, always was always will be you know it speaks for itself um we are the oldest surviving living culture cultures mm. um in the world and that's something to celebrate it's something to be proud of and um you know it's something to commemorate as well you know all of our struggles and our fight so uh, we're not going anywhere and our, mm. our cultures are still very much alive and and are living today so I think I your think earrings, your earrings are a nice tie in too. I can see them pers pers yep. persist, House of Dizzy. exist, <laughs> uh, resist. It's spot on. Yeah. yeah. House of Dizzy. Shout out to House of Dizzy. Hey, um, so, yeah, that makes sense. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 
um, encouragement to anyone else that, you know, next year is, is, is going to watch this and thinking about, you know, should I apply, you know, any, maybe, maybe musician, you might speak to more musicians or young mums or, or mm. just, just um, what would you say to them, these people out there that... Yeah, I was I'm just thinking Ari. about this. Um, I really want to say to the young up and coming leaders, you know, really, really trust when your when your family, when your peers actually acknowledge you and um, believe in your strengths, like see that for yourself, uh, and really just just own your accomplishments and own who you are and your strengths and your individual talents because you've got to back yourself. You know, if you don't back yourself, then and, and build a strong foundation for yourself, then, you know, you can easily fall down. Um, one thing that I wish as a 20, 21 year old is to have that self-confidence and self-belief and, and really just, just believe it and just enjoy it and be in the present moment. Um, but yeah, I just want to say like, you know, stand strong in who you are and, and don't compromise, you know, your value, values and your morals and what your family have, um, you know, gifted to you. Um, stand strong in that and be proud of who you are. Um, like it, it sounds so, it sounds so generalized, but honestly, like if I could go back mm. six years from now, uh, six years yeah. ago, um, I really would just say, you know, just be who you are, be proud of who you are and um, believe in yourself. Um, it sounds, yeah, very, uh, <laughs> very generic. It but, sounds very real. Uh, yeah. And, and also actually uh, um, lean on your mentors and, and your family, your elders, because it's not shame to ask for help. You know, the help is out there and, um, you know, it's actually a sign of strength and resilience to, to ask for help and say, you know, I need some guidance in this area. And you'll never, um, you know, you'll, you'll always gain something, you know. And um, even if you fall down and it's not a fail failure, it's a lesson and um, there's always that guidance and that support out there for you. And Yeah. Just be strong and be who you are. <laughs> Mine. Thanks so much for your time today and happy NADOC. Happy NADOC. <laughs>